Yeah, I can start by introducing myself. So hello everyone, my name is Sasha. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in Grenoble and I've just finished a PhD on open energy modeling. So as you can imagine, I'm really glad to be here. And so today I'll be presenting to you the interests of Jupyter notebooks as intermediary objects uh, uh, in energy modeling. So that's about it. Uh, the main message of today's presentation is going from open source code that this community knows very well to opening the whole modeling process. Um, that is to say, and you've you figured it out with Stefan Feninger's uh, image uh, just before, going from data sets, open data, open metadata, to open source models, to open and accessible results and findings, that is to say open access articles and everything. And this in link with the various stakeholders in the energy modeling process. So also opening the assumptions and the objectives of the modeling process. Yeah. Um, and so I think that Jupyter Notebooks can be really nice in uh, the task of opening this whole process. Um, Jupyter Notebooks are actually based on literary programming, which was funded in the 80s by Donald Knuth. Uh, the idea is that rather than indicating the computer what to do, let's focus on explaining human beings what we want the computer to do. This is the main idea uh, with Jupyter Notebooks. And um, yeah, I think, uh, you probably all already know Jupyter Notebooks, generally speaking. So with Markdown cells, where you can put text, images, which can be really convenient to put the assumptions, the objectives, the contacts of the stakeholders, stuff like that. And as well, the, the code cells input and outputs, where you can see what the process is actually doing. And so in the end, you have an object that is understandable, but uh, without an information overload, which is kind of the issue of open source sometimes. And still you have the access to the exhaustive energy modeling tool code and documentation. So this is sort of like a nice trade between the two. Next, please. And so generally speaking, compared to an open access articles or even to open uh, source code, open code and data, the notebooks I believe can set the context of the open energy modeling process. That is to say, as we discussed, the assumptions, the objectives, the stakeholders. And so it improves the reproducibility and generally speaking, it enables to understand the limits and the assumptions of the modeling process to adapt your modeling process by changing the parameters, changing the objective for a given notebook, and also to compare models by taking a, a notebook with given data, given assumptions, and just changing the models uh, into it. Yeah. And so I used it in my PhD for various uh, purposes. First, for using notebooks simply as research supplementary material, so on, on several use cases, recent recovery, uh, PV self-consumption. And I also try to use the to use it for teaching, which is quite convenient, but also for mediation uh, with citizen collective, which was interesting and sometimes uh, limited as well. Uh, so yeah, the, the limits of using notebooks that I uh, I uh, I discovered was first the versioning in Git, which is quite tough, and the management of the computing environment if you want people to directly use and access your notebook online. Also. Uh, regarding the participation with citizen collectives, there's a need for complementary materials and activities. You can't just put a notebook in anyone's hand and everything's going to be okay. And also the sustainability of using plenty of notebooks online, which can be explored at some point. And so that's about it. The resources that I wrote uh, an article a few years ago about this sort of methodology of using notebooks for open energy modeling process. And uh, there's also my PhD manuscript that I will translate at some point because uh, right now it's in French. You also have some notebook templates if you want to, to have ideas about it. Thank you.